Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are back in our fly-by-wire A320. We're flying an old flight we haven't done quite a while from Tucson, Arizona over to Los Angeles, California. This is the same flight that is done in the PDF tutorial guide that I have available for download on Patreon. So stick around guys because hopefully it will be a very informative flight for you. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, jumping into the cockpit, the first thing I want you guys to be aware of is we did experience a bug the last couple times I tried to fly this, where the aircraft would suddenly start seesawing very violently back and forth and find its way plummeting down to the ground. Um, luckily, the sim terminates before we see the final end result of that, but uh, we're going to uh, hope that, that doesn't repeat itself today and uh, hope for a good flight. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get start with the overhead panel here. We're gonna go battery one, battery two, then external power. Leave all the fuel pumps off for now. Gens will stay off until we get to the APU or engines running. These are the engine generators. You have the APU generator here. Again, they'll all remain off until the respective systems turn on. Coming up to the top left, nav one, nav two, and nav three for the IRS system. Go into the nav position, or excuse me, IRS one, two, and three to the nav position. Moving on down, we want to make sure evac is set to the captain's orders and given the uh, event of an evacuation order only comes from the captain in our situation today. Crew oxygen supply, make sure that gets turned on. Moving over to our lights, we're doing wing lights, nav and logo lights today. Make sure our emergency exit light is set to arm, seatbelt signs on, and no smoking or portable devices sign turned on as well until we get to a correct altitude, which we can allow them to do so. With that in mind, let's go ahead and step down to the forward flight deck here and set some lights. Nav display, primary flight display, upper and lower ECAM display. There we go. Set our brightness as desired on the FCP. And from here, let's go ahead and at least get our ATIS. Oops, wrong button. I don't know why I went to the escape menu. I don't use in-game ATC, I don't like the way it is set up, but I do like using the ATIS so we can get our proper runways. Altimeter 3005, ILS 11 left today, I almost never get 11 left, that's kind of awesome. Alright. So, 3005 on the altimeter. Come on. Wow, like, I cannot... We're going to have to go with 3004 on the standby. I can't get it to 5. Won't let me. All right. No big worry there. We're okay. All is well. Okay. So, with that in mind, we're also going to come over to SimBrief and complete our flight plan. All right. So, now that we've completed our flight or our ATIS information, American Airlines 4310 flying from Tucson, Arizona over to Los Angeles, California with an alternate route over to Ontario, California. On the 21st of October, or the 3rd of October, excuse me, 2021, we're using the A320 fly-by-wire uh, profile for SimBrief. This can be found on the fly-by-wire website for download. And uh, let's see here. We've got a cruise profile or cost index of 80. We're running really high today because we're not paying for the fuel, so why not worry about it? Make sure your ILS uh, or... Uh, ILS, gosh, I can't think today. Your reserve fuel is set to 45 minutes for an IFR flight. In case for any reason we need to orbit or whatever. Departure runway, verify we are on the correct departure runway. We're looking for 1-1 one, one left today, expecting arrival on 2-5 left. Not going to carry any extra fuel today other than the reserves for the 45 minutes. We're good there. Passengers, we've got a full flight going to LA today with a cargo of 34.4 thousand pounds. Zero fuel weight, we'll leave that auto. Dispatcher name, leave that auto. And obviously, the captain, yours truly, Overkill Productions. 
We'll be departing from the Burrow 4 SID standard instrument departure, catching on to the Gila Bend transition, jumping on to the J104 um, airway, coming off of the airway at Messy, then jumping on to the Eastwood um, transition onto the Hollywood 1 arrival. From the Hollywood 1 arrival, we'll then be entering in onto the 25 left approach. So as long as all looks good, which I'm totally okay with our flight plan, we're going to hit generate flight. Hit yes. My personal preference. Now, we are going to be using the SimBrief integration today, keeping things nice and simple. So most of this will be imported for us directly into the aircraft, um, which is always a really nice uh, feature as it makes the startup process significantly smoother and faster. But just in case, I like to do a print view of the PDF here just so we have that on standby in case it's necessary. We'll go ahead and close out SimBrief, leave the PDF up. I'm going to drag it off screen in case we need it leaving our top numbers here. All right, and now let's go ahead and get into programming the aircraft. All right, so the first thing I like to do is come on down over to the uh, fly pad, go to our main menu and hit from SimBrief. Make sure it loads our flight plan. We also have the OFP here available too. The operational flight plan can be found here. Simply left click and hold to drag the menu around. So actually with that in mind, I can go ahead and close that uh, browser window. We don't need it. I didn't think about that. Fuel planning, you can either set it here individually or we can set it from the MCDU, which is what we will, we will be doing using the MCDU integration. So let's jump on down to that and uh, complete the startup here. So starting with the MCDU program, the thing I like to do first, go to the initialization here. And we're going to go to initialization request. And this will load in all of our flight plan data as well as the uh, route information. From here, I like to go back to the MCDU menu, go to ATSU, go to the AOC, Airline Operational Control, go to our weights and balances here. And we can clear the lower messages there. I always like to do the OFP request send just in case for any reason any of this information didn't upload properly. Then hit load fuel. You can see the aircraft sort of bounced for a second. Then we can come over here to the next page and hit a request send. This is required. And you can see now it gives us what our total loadout is going to be and hit start boarding. All right. So while the boarding is completing, we will then continue on with our MCDU programming. In order to do so, we're going to go back to the initialization page just to get us back to where we started. Now, the DIFSRIP is the um, sort of acronym that is used now it's, it's uh let's see here i gotta remember how this is data initialization flight plan initialization again performance um and then we're done and ready to take off so we've already done initialization one now we're going to go over to the flight plan all right and the data menu is just verifying all of the aircraft's current configuration information Okay, we don't actually have to worry about that uh, by default as it's loaded in obviously with the simulation. So then we go to the initialization page, complete this page here, then we're going to go to flight plan. All right, so all of our flight plan information will be loaded automatically. However, it's everything in the route. Okay, your SID, your standard instrument departure, and your STAR, standard terminal arrival route, will not be loaded automatically. Because even in the real world, you can plan or hope for whichever SID and STAR you like. But at the end of the day, it's up to ATC to grant that to you. It's going to be based on winds, active runways, you know, current airport situations, etc. So... ATC is the one who determines whether or not you actually get the route that you're looking for or the departure and arrival. So we're going to obviously simulate that we got what we wanted. So we're going to click on KTUS to set up our departure. Click on departure. We are departing from 1-1 one, one left today. From 1-1 one, one left, we're jumping onto the Burrow 4. From the Burrow 4, we're jumping onto the Gila Bend transition. And we're just going to hit insert. The cool thing about SIDS is you always read them left to right. From stars, you read them from right to left, and I'll explain that in a minute. But you can see, verify all your information right here. One one left, jumping onto the Burrow 4 from the Burrow 4, exiting the Burrow 4 using the Gila Bend transition, and that's when we fly over to the J104. Okay, so we're gonna hit insert. And now doing the same thing with our destination. So click on the destination, select arrival. Now remember, we are hoping for 25 left as our approach runway. So ILS 25 left. We are coming in on the Hollywood 1 arrival. And we are going to be using the 
Standby, Sivu transition. And I'm going to show you guys how we're getting that information because it's not apparent based on what we're seeing here. So for that, we're going to need Navigraph. And KLAX. Guess I haven't flown to Los Angeles in a while. And let's see here. We're talking about stars. And we're looking at the Hollywood one to begin with. So let's talk about the back end of this first. So here's the Eastwood transition that we were talking about earlier that we're going to be using to jump on to the Hollywood one. Okay, so remember we're flying from Gila Bend, which would be down over here. Gila Bend, we're jumping on the J-104, which is like... An a freeway for the sky. It's an airway, right? So it's a very specific route. We'll be exiting there at Messy, okay? And from Messy, we'll be flying direct, pointing the nose directly at Eastwood. From Eastwood, using that to jump on right here at Midler, which is the entryway to the Hollywood One. Okay, you can see that route straightens out, and there's the Hollywood Waypoint itself. Okay, now what's happening when we're leaving here? Okay, when we get all the way down here to the bottom, there is Sivu. So Sivu is our only option down here for the Hollywood One arrival, meaning that it is the only way to exit the Hollywood One star, which makes this our transition point from the Hollywood One star onto the 2-5 left approach. And if we come over to the approach plate and find our 2-5 left, there is Sivu right there. So you can see where we're exiting the Hollywood One, then we're going to make a slight turn to the right at 270 degrees and jump onto the approach for the 25 left approach. All right. Hope that all makes sense and you guys understand where I got Sivu from and why I'm not picking any of the other options. Okay. So we're going to grab Sivu, throw it in here. And remember, I told you guys that we're going to read everything from the star from right to left. There's that Eastwood transition, jumping onto the Hollywood one. Exiting the Hollywood one at Sivu, joining the ILS 25 left approach. Okay, hit insert, and voila, my friends, we are done with the flight plan. So, continuing with our diffs rip uh, acronym, we're moving back over to the initialization page, going over to page two, and here's where we're going to calculate our zero fuel weight, enter in our total fuel on board, and uh, get our performance numbers ready to roll. So, Zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight center of gravity. We're going to go ahead and just give that a click. It auto calculates it down here. Click it again to bring it up to the box. For the block fuel, I like to just pick my head up real quick and grab it from right here. We're looking at 15.1 thousand pounds. So let's grab that. And we're just going to type 15.1 and drop it on in and wait for numbers to calculate. Looking absolutely beautiful. Our numbers are complete. All right, we are looking at a, let's see here. I thought we had our flight time up here. Oh, trip time. Looking about an hour and 16 minutes, so not too bad. Uh, should be a pretty eventless flight is what we're hoping for today. Let's move on over to the performance section now, continuing on with our acronym. We're gonna be using flaps one for takeoff. Transition altitude, always 18,000 feet in the United States. This is the altitude at which we switch from our current barometric pressure to the standard two niner niner two. All right, flex temp, we're not gonna worry about today. We're just gonna go full toga because we're just going we're in beast mode today. So we wanna just push this aircraft to its max. V1, the speed at which the aircraft can no longer safely be stopped at the runway, you must take off no matter what happens. Even if, God forbid, Santa Claus comes in front of you and take him out with the nose wheel, you must still continue with the takeoff. All right, VR, the speed at which we begin rotating the nose aft and picking her up. And V2, the speed at which, heaven forbid, in the event of an engine loss, the aircraft will continue to accelerate and climb. All right. So, all of that information is now complete, which completes our MCDU programming and configuration. We are ready to get moving on to other greater things. We are going to take our V2 speed, come up to the FCP, if I hit the right screen, and we're going to enter 142, but plus 10 knots today. So, we're going to look for 152 knots. And we want to make sure we're in manage mode. See, you can see it clicked there. And now you can see that speed populating over here. So we hit the down arrow. And what this is, it's just forcing a better climb out, okay? It just provides a better takeoff performance by adding that 10 knots. The 10 knots plus 15, plus 20 in some of the really larger aircraft. Um, this is typically company policy. Um, it, it's not, there's no groundbreaking 
uh, rule. This is what you follow. It's typically up to the company, but again, its purpose is to simply provide a better takeoff experience for the aircraft. We're going to set our initial altitude, which in order to do so, we are going to need our KTUS approach book or uh, departure book, excuse me. So we're going to open up the book here and we're going to find our SIDS. We're going to look for the burrow four. And this is because we're not using ATC today. So here's the direction we're going to come out. Let me show you guys this. So we are coming out from here. To, here's the borough waypoint. Going over to Splits. Going over to Ryan, which is over Ryan Field. Rosker, and then up to Gila Bend. Okay, so now. Um, we are looking for any altitude restrictions that we must be aware of. So at Rosker, we need to be above 9,000 feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to set 10,000 as our initial target. Make things nice and easy. So here we go. This will make sure that we're above our altitudes. All right, so there's 10,000 feet in the box. And the last thing that we need is our final runway heading for one one left, which as you can see right here is one, two, three degrees. So we'll put that in our heading bug. And we can tell the autopilot is already in heading mode by the hash line shown here on the nav display. Okay, hash lines indicate you're in manual mode, darn it and a solid line would indicate FMS control. All right, so we have our heading bug set, we have our takeoff speed set, we have our initial altitude set, we have our altimeter set. We do need to step to the back here and set our transponder. So first we're gonna start with a clear, I know that's pretty hard to see because of the sunlight guys, but we're gonna simulate that we have a transponder code today of 5241 and we're gonna set our transponder to auto for now, leaving the TCAS system in standby, as well as predictive wind shear and the weather radar remain off. Okay, we can also lock our cabin door at this time. Stepping up to the uh, forward flight deck, let's do one last quick check, make sure there's nothing that we have missed. Running through my numbers here. Okay, let's begin with the remainder of the startup procedure. So at this point, we're going to be looking at starting the APU, doing our pushback, and then finally starting the engines. So let's get started. All right, so before we get started, we do want to make sure that we do a fire test of our APU. So let's do a quick test on the system. Everything looks good. Close the flap down. Let's start our fuel pumps. Go to the master switch on the APU. Give her a tap and do a start. And let's also bring up the beacon light, letting everyone know the aircraft's getting ready to get busy. All right. APU bleed can remain off for the time being until we are actually ready to start the aircraft. All right. We can monitor the APU startup process by stepping on downstairs. And as soon as you start the APO, APO, wow, APU, the lower ECAM display will switch to the APU. Flap open indicates uh, air intake process is, in, is beginning with the APU. Here's our APU N percent. We're looking for basically 100% before we can actually use the APU. And we have our exhaust temperature from the APU in Celsius. So we'll wait until she's available for us and then we will begin getting this aircraft ready to roll. Now what we can also do while we're waiting is, by whatever means you like to use, guys, start your pushback. Cockpit to ground. This is ground, stand by. APU is now available. Let's step upstairs for a minute. Flip on our APU gen, disable the external power. And we're just gonna hold tight for right now until we are ready, uh, clear of the gate to start the engines. Let's chime our cabin. We can also set our MCDU back to the flight plan. Okay, sir. The bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is removed. The parking brakes are set. You may lift. Parking brake set. Lifting the aircraft. Isn't that cool? Alright, so we are going to be... Looks like... Standing by for pushback. Pretty interesting back taxi, honestly. So we can't come to the left. Tail's got to go out to the right. And then I think we're just going to go back quite a ways and taxi out this way. And of course, the one time I get 1-1 one, one left, although he's heading over to 2-9 right, so that's interesting. But 1-1 uh, one, one left is back over here. So of course, the one time I get it, I'm parked at the other end of the runway, as always. Okay. 
Now the thing about this awesome toolbar pushback is once this lights up, you are ready to begin setting things up. So we're going to go reverse. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We are cleared for start and push. Parking brake set. Okay, cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Parking brake has parking been released. Are released. We're going to put our engine push start back. switch over into ignition. Yeah, we'll start in the sequence. He's starting out there. I'm going to slow the tug down a little bit. Give me more time to do what I need to do here. Okay. Now, we can turn on our APU bleed. Get ready to start the engines. Let's do a fire test on engines one and two. Good. Fire test looks good. Let's step back outside for a minute. Whoa! Turned it way too soon, didn't we? See, this is what I was worried about. All right, let's uh, let's bring her back over here. This is why I was part of an application that was being built a long time ago that was doing sort of like pre-programmed taxi routes, and I wish I wish that program hadn't died, that project hadn't died, but it looks like it did. Um, it was really awesome because you could literally just as long as you parked at a location that you've used before, you could pre-create a template and it made it really, really nice. Okay, so we're pointing at least in the right direction now. I can get back in here and we can start our engine startup process. So APU bleed is on, APU gen is on, fire tests are complete. So at this point, we'll step back down to the lower uh, display here. Start up engine two and we'll start monitoring for the idle position. And you can see there she goes, N2 com uh, compressor is running be waiting for N1 to start spinning here. Let's come back outside while we're waiting for that. Sort of point it in a direction here that we can just let it roll for a minute. Not the greatest pushback that I've done, but uh, you know, I don't think I've ever taxied out from this location before either, though, ironically enough. Alright, engine one or engine two now at available. Verify generators are on for gen two. There we go. And let's now switch on to engine one. Into spinning. Got a long pushback. I think I I don't think I taxied or pushed back into the correct position. I mean, guilty as charged there. I really don't think I did. Oops, wrong way. So that part was my fault. I'm pretty sure that I that I didn't taxi correctly here. But lesson learned. Alright, and that's good there. So we can go ahead and stop the pushback here. Okay, pushback completed. Please set your parking brake. Okay. Set our parking brake. Parking brake set. Parking brake set. Flight Lowering aircraft. Take off. Cool. Ground. Startup is complete. You may disconnect. Alright. Now, th cool. there are some people who have, uh... Have Misunderstandings about the ignition switch. The ignition switch should position. actually be active in goodbye. all critical stages of flight. So takeoff as well as landing. Um, you should always have the uh, engine mode position, start switch in the um, ignition position. Okay? And that's in case you ever have an engine flame out. You don't have to worry about tapping that to start the engine. You just cycle the engine start. All right. Let's set flaps one for takeoff as we desired. Arm those spoilers. Predicted wind shear now turns on. Weather radar, weather radar up to you, and if necessary, TCAS system comes on. 
Auto brake set to max for the event of a rejected takeoff. Stepping upstairs. Taxi light comes on. APU bleed, or Gen 1, excuse me, needs to be turned on as well while we're up here. APU bleed can now be uh, disabled. Master switch on the APU can be shut off as well. All right, doing a last quick check and sweep of our controls here. It looks like everything is good to go. So let's get her out of here. Taxi lights are set. I'm just doing my last quick check here. TCAS, flaps, spoilers, predictive wind shear, transponder, auto brakes, initial altitude, runway heading, takeoff speed, altimeter, flight directors. Let's turn our flight directors on. And uh, American Airlines 4310 is ready for departure. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, let's get ourselves taxied out to runway 11 left. So, parking brake released. Adding some power, monitoring ground speed here. There she goes. While turning, we keep the A320 under 10 knots. She will typically accelerate up to about 10 knots by the time you exit said turn. In a straight line, we can typically do anywhere from 20 to 25 knots as long as safe and uh, all obstructions are clear. Oops. There she goes. Let's slow her back underneath that 10 knot limit. on throttles I hate when they do this so the thing that's really frustrating and this has been a recent development I think it was in some update 5 I think if you try to use a control while holding down the right click mouse button so I use right click to move my camera around and if I try to do anything else while that's going on moving the camera okay if you try to do anything else put apply the brake change throttle settings doesn't matter it doesn't happen and that's super freaking annoying. Like, come on. I, that, that's one of those ones that, like, I literally, I am super annoyed by that. Super annoyed by that. Um, I suppose we can join the taxi away from here. Rather than just taxiing down the ramp. Taxi down to one one left here. And let's hit the test config for takeoff configuration. All right, and we are approaching one one left. All right, let's hang tight for a quick second here. We're just gonna step upstairs here. Taxi lights move up into the takeoff position. Landing lights come on. And strobe light moves into the auto or on position. We'll go ahead and go just on today. And I think we're ready to get out of here. So let's get this aircraft in the air. And see, like, that was it. I used the camera while I had the foot brakes down. So, in order to get the foot brakes to release, I had to tap the brakes. It just, it's really annoying. I don't know why. I don't know why this is a thing. I don't use the head tracker typically in the A320 because you're so busy in the um, flight deck that uh, I don't want you guys missing things because of cameras jolting, etc. So. All right, well, we are ready to go, guys, so let's go ahead and set 
50% engine power, verify engines are stable. Looking fantastic, release those brakes. Increase power gradually up to Toga. Toga is set and indicating on the flight deck or on the uh, primary flight display. I don't know why I keep saying the flight deck. Maybe I just like the way it sounds. We want about two degrees nose down until we reach 80 knots. There's 80 knots. Hundred knots. 120. V1 ready to rock. There's rotation speed coming up very gently, looking for about 17 degrees nose up. Positive rate indicating landing gear comes up. Following our flight director all the way up here. So to approximately 17 degrees at about 3 degrees per second is what you're looking at for that. Uh, incline. Lights are up. Nice, long, steady climb here. Did I say lights are up? I said nice up is what I meant to say. Alright, and there's the thrust reduction altitude. So pulling those levers back into the lever climb position. There we go. You'll know you're in climb when we'll say thrust climb. Get that nose pitched back down here to where it wants us to be. Looking fantastic. At this point, the aircraft's going to accelerate. We're waiting for the speed tape to reach this S here, and then we'll retract our flaps. Let's keep us on track with our flight director here. Switch over to managed mode. And we're ready when we engage the autopilot. Nav is now indicating on the primary flight display, indicating the nav mode is enabled. There's our turn to the right, also flaps up. Still flying manually for now. Spoilers can be disarmed. Very smooth aircraft to fly. A lot of fun to fly. I have found myself less and less, or I should say more and more frequently, relying less on the autopilot. Trying to get better about flying or myself. At least typically until about 10,000 feet. I don't fly the whole way out. I mean, that's just, yeah, no. But typically, you know, once we're at 10,000 feet, you know, we've truly exited the airspace gotten to do all the cool stuff while flying the aircraft even when typically when you think about it you normally have someone you know helping you do a lot of this stuff we can do quite a bit though ourselves we really can i am going to set uh, an increase to our altitude here we're going to go to 13,000 actually let's go up to 15,000 you know i didn't even check shame on me i really don't remember what was our cruise altitude 320 today all right well that's high for where we're going but what the heck, we'll get her back down. Let's just go ahead and take her all the way up. We don't have any other altitude restrictions up on the uh, departure plates, so why not? Uh-oh, missing a turn. Get her turning, get her turning, get her turning. Come on, baby. I want to be gentle. Remember, we're uh, taking passengers. We're going to be off course a little bit. I missed my turn a little bit. There's 10,000 feet. At this point, I am going to give it command over to the autopilot. We're going to come upstairs, turn those lights off. We're also going to step downstairs and set our engine master mode back into the normal position. Now that we're airborne, all is safe and well. All right, so from here, the next thing that we have on the books here is we're going to be at 18,000 feet. We'll be giving a down arrow click, as you can see here on the display on the uh, barometer, to set our barometric pressure down to the standard of 2, 9, or 9, or 2. Again, that will happen at 18,000 feet. Um, and from there, we'll be climbing all the way up to cruise. And after once we get to cruise, we will plan our descent so we can determine when it's time to descend the aircraft and how we're going to manage that. 
But uh, other than that, guys, pretty straightforward flight. That was a good execution of uh, takeoff. Everything's been going really smoothly with the aircraft so far, so let's hope it stays that way. I'll see you guys in just a bit here. Um, the only other thing that I like to do at this point is just extend the uh, display range up to, you know, anywhere between 40 and 80 miles, depending on how far you're flying. We can go 80. we got quite a ways to go yet. But uh, anyway been fun so far and uh, I'll catch you guys when we get up to that cruise altitude. So remember 18,000 feet set your altimeter down to the standard 2992. Super important. Alright guys, catch you at cruise. Alright my friends, we have been up at cruise for quite a while now. We're uh, let's see here, where are we at? I'm looking at 80 miles so we're about 40 miles from Eastwood so it's time to start looking into this. So I'm actually going to pause the sim for a second because I want to make sure we don't miss our point here. Probably should have started this a little bit sooner. But let's go back to KLAX and we're going to take a look at the star. And what I like to do is find the Hollywood one. Where are you? Where's my Hollywood? There it is. All right. And what I'm going to be doing here is I use... This there's a couple different ways or there's many different ways you can calculate your descent it's totally up to you really when it comes down to it what i always typically do is use the transition the last waypoint of the star as my guidance point for um for my top of descent and here's why almost always at the top of descent or at the end of the star is you know you're going to be joining your approach from there so you can do this one of two ways i like to be at the altitude that I need to be at at the bottom of the star um, because from the approach it's real easy to manage your altitude you know everything's stepped down in the approach plate like I'll show you what I'm talking about here let's go to two five left again we can see that even from Sivu we know at Sivu we're supposed to be between uh, 12 and 14 thousand now we're gonna pick the lower end of that we're gonna come down to 12 thousand feet by Sivu at a max of 270 knots but then if we come over to crane you got everything labeled out for you. So you could use crane too if you want it. I mean, it's really up to you how you want to do it. Um, but uh, crane is going to be 10,000, then 9,000, then 8,000, 7, blah, blah, blah. It's really easy to manage your altitude as long as you're paying attention to your approach plate once you get onto the star or onto the approach. And then once we find the initial approach fix, which is this guy right here, radar fix, okay? Um, at Crane, you can typically engage the approach mode, you know, as long as you're configured, uh, you know, ILS frequency set, you know, your uh, your aircraft's ready for roll, etc. like that. And we'll talk about all that in a minute here uh, when we actually get down to programming the approach into the MCDU, which will be very shortly. Um, but uh, it, I find the approach much easier to manage manually versus trying to use, you know, set my uh, top of descent all the way down to the... Okay, sorry about that. I had a three-year-old with a paper airplane crisis. <laughs> Anyways, so the reason why I typically like to use, in a long story summed up here, the transition uh, point is because a you have a typically you have a fixed altitude. Either it's going to be a very small range, like we have twelve between twelve and fourteen thousand, and you'll almost always have a max speed, whether it be two hundred and fifty knots or um, you know two hundred and. Uh, you know 70 knots whatever it may be so from there then you can just start adjusting and stepping your way through that's typically how i like to do it although today actually to show you something a little bit easier i think we will use crane that actually sort of makes more sense the nice thing about crane is you have a lot of things that are going to happen here okay our restriction here is 10,000 feet we need to be at 10,000 feet now we're still going to be 37.2 miles out from la um, but at 10,000 feet, we know our lights need to come on. At 10,000 feet, we know we need to be at 250 knots. You know, and so the nice thing about picking a solid um, waypoint like this, where there isn't an altitude variance, but you must be at, okay, in this case, is it makes it real easy to figure out the top of descent. So let's jump into the cockpit, and I'll show you guys what I mean. So we're going to come over here, and we're just going to use the, the descent calculator that's built in. It works relatively well. It really does. Current altitude, we're going to hit sink 32,000 feet. Target altitude, we're going down to 10,000 feet. That, uh, okay. There we go, 10,000 feet. And uh, from here, we can hit, um, let's see here, landing. Oh, that's all different information. We can calculate that. I'll go over that in a whole different tutorial. That's a whole nother bag of worms. I'm trying to keep this one simple. So 32,000 feet, 10,000 feet. Now, the other thing that I actually do like to use, and I'll put a link to this in the description if you guys want to go a little bit further 
without getting crazy is I use a top of descent calculator and I find this to be even easier to use um, gives you much more detail here so 32,000 feet is where we're starting at, ending at 10,000 feet okay starting speed let's figure out what we're currently at we're at 451 knots okay so we're gonna come in here and type 451 knots ending speed 250 knots wind direction you guys can figure all that out if you'd like but you have to get your average end or average wind direction and speed tailwind is going to be plus negative is going to be a headwind okay and we know here top of descent is actually going to be 91 nautical miles so let's go ahead and jump on over here and at this point what we're going to be looking for oop wrong one let's extend this a little extend this a little bit so we got Midler, Avatar, or Aviator, excuse me. So we got quite a ways away before we're actually ready for that top of descent. Um, but what we're going to be looking for is here's our 120 nautical mile mark. Here's the 80 nautical mile mark. So right about here where my mouse is. When Crane gets there, we want to be ready to descend. Okay, that'll put us at 90 miles out um, and uh, give us a little bit of time to descend. Now, let's check anything else here. We're not quite ready to enter the approach data yet. So when we get, uh, you'll get a flash on the MCDU that says um, approach data needed or some, something to that uh, effect. I can't remember exactly what the verbiage is, but we'll see it in a few minutes. As soon as that pops up, we'll be ready to go. But we know now when we are going to begin our descent and uh, we'll be going all the way down to 10,000 feet. Um, now, when you're doing this, it is very important to make sure you're watching your SIDs or your stars, excuse me, because a lot of stars will have altitude restrictions built in between them. So sometimes you'll be restricted at a certain waypoint at 24,000 feet. You need to make sure we're not breaching those altitude restrictions as we descend. All right. But for today's flight, nice, simple and easy. I'll catch you guys when it's time to enter the approach data and then when it's time to descend the aircraft. All right, my friends, so we have a few things going on here that we need to address. First off, we're coming up on Crane. We uh, got about 25 miles, give or take, to go before we have to start our descent. The other thing we've got going on down here at the MCDU is the enter destination data. So there's a couple different options here that you guys have as far as acquiring all this. You can use the MCDU um, in order to get your meet our information. You can assume that live weather is actually working correctly and uh, dial that all in. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, Google LAX. Um, so I'm just typing in Google search KLAX Medar, meteorological data. And we're just gonna pull it up here and hope that it works out right. But what we want here is everything that's lined up here. So let's do this for a second here. Let's go to the performance page. And we're going to go to next phase and next phase again. And here's what we're looking for. So altimeter is 2987 right now. So we're going to type that in and again, hope that it's correct. Temperature right now is 25 degrees Celsius. Nice hot day. Winds, we are looking at, give me a second here. Let me read through this. Winds, see here, 260 at 9 knots. So 260 for zero 09 oops I hit decimal I did for zero 09 there we go throw that in there transition altitude we talked about this earlier always 18,000 feet in the United States and then barrel and radio what we're looking for here is our minimums so we go to the two five left approach click on the approach play okay we're already there and what you're looking for is we're doing a cat one and so it's DA decision height Barometric is going to be 304 feet, or if you're using the radar altimeter, which is what we're going to do, we're going to be doing 200 feet, which is pretty much the standard just about anywhere you go. So we're going to type in 200 and drop that under radio, and that'll set our minimums, and that's the approach phase complete. We can now go back to flight plan. And now let's come back up and take a look at our, M or at our um, display here and verify that we're still on track for our descent. We are looking pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and set us down. Remember, we talked about 10,000 feet being our target. We don't have any other restrictions other than at Sivu. We do need to make sure we're between 12 and 14,000 feet. So I'll tell you what, let's start with 12,000 just to be on the safe side. We're close enough now. That's probably about 95 to 100 miles, give or take. Let's go ahead and just hit the up click. If you watch the arrow here, let me see if I can get you guys a better view. Notice the arrow goes for the up. 
That puts us in a managed mode. You can see descent come up on the PFD. And at this point, the aircraft will begin to slow down and initiate its descent. Now, as we get lower and lower, we're going to want to pay attention to our airspeed. But for right now, we're certainly well within the range to do so. So we can now set our uh, nav display view back up to about 80 miles is what I like to do. Um, and from here, we'll just let the aircraft continue her descent at 18,000 feet. We also need to make sure we set our altimeter. Now, I have noticed that, uh, especially if you want to use like the B key, sometimes you have to wait for about 17,500, 17,200 before you actually try to adjust the altimeter unless you know what it is manually. Now, we know what our landing altimeter is, but we don't know what the... Um, the barometric pressure between those distances are so the barometric pressure can change at 17,000 feet typically what I'll do is I'll hit the B key at about 17,000 and then I'll hit it again between 12 and 10,000 and then usually I'll do one more time right about 3,000 as we come on to that final fix for the approach all right but I will see you guys as we uh, I'll probably see you guys about 18,000 feet we'll talk again all right so I'll see you guys in a few okay so real quick guys um, I actually goofed and I'm glad I caught it so we do have further altitude restrictions and I don't know what I was thinking that CV was our only concern, but it's not. Hollywood, we need to be below 32,000 feet, which we definitely are. We're riding right at 24,000 feet, which is a requirement at Bruin. At Bruin, we need to make sure that we are at 280 knots in between 24 and 30,000 feet. So coming back over here for a second here, we need to first slow this aircraft down. So we're going to go into managed mode and take her down to 280 knots. We need to make sure that that is maintained before we reach the Bruin waypoint. From Bruin, then we're going to descend down to uh, Aviator, um, which is either Aviator or Avatar. I, I'm not sure which one that is. Um, I need to find like a list that just tells you how what all these are. For the longest time, I called Eastwood East or uh, yeah, called Eastwood Eastwind. So like, I need to find like a chart that tells me exactly what they are because clearly I uh, don't pay attention. And actually, you know what? I think it tells you on Sim Brief, but. Anyway, I digress. So Aviator, we need to be between 24 and 19,000 feet. Um, given the direction we're heading, we always want to make sure those are at even intervals, if memory serves. Um, and then at day, we need to be above 17,000 feet, wad up above 15,000 feet, kneel above 14,000 feet, and then finally at sea, we can come down to 12 and then down to 10. So this is actually a really good approach for you guys to see how I manage all of these. So we'll actually be on the horn quite a bit um, I will make sure to show you guys how I stage each and every um, degradation speed. So uh, for right now, we are going to be initiating our descent. Once we reach Bruin down to Aviator, we'll be going down to 20,000. Alrighty, so I'll catch you guys in just a few minutes. Okay, so our flight route just changed to the next waypoint. So at this point, I'm going to hit the down arrow, go into an open descent. Open descent, you'll find that she descends quite a bit faster. And we're going to come on down to 20,000 feet. And our goal here is to be between 24 and 19,000. So we've got definitely plenty of room to play with. We're already within our um, threshold of limitation here. From here, I like to set... As we start getting into more and more of those restrictions, I like to set my uh, display range a bit lower than some of the others. Um, the one we're out on course, I should say. Um, and it just helps me manage our descent a bit better. So, for example, you can see here that if I were to continue our descent and change it now, we'd actually probably descend past um, our point. Now, the nice thing is that day is very close. So, if we zoom in here, that's probably a better image. Right about three miles when I'll start our descent, give or take, between three and three and a half. So, as long as we uh, make that point, you know, and the uh, distance matches where our altitude is going to be, then I will adjust the descent. But like, for example, here, once you see this altitude, you can change this down to your next target. So we're going to go to 18,000. And vertical speed should not have been activated. So let's just... <sighs> Dang it. hate it when you do this crap. Actually, that kind of works out, but I would rather be in a managed descent. There we go. I forgot they fixed that. Um, if you manually just adjust your altitude, it will automatically put you into vertical speed. So I did forget about that. That's my fault. 
But actually, we're looking really good here. So those aviator, and we're now setting for a target of 18,000 feet by day. Remember, we want to be on those even numbers, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, we stay above 17,000. So we're looking pretty good. But once we're sure that that's going to reach, and it looks like we are right on track here. We're seven miles from day. Now at five miles. Well, six actually. Okay, so from here, there's no concern about me breaching that 17,000 at this point, so now we're going to come down to 12. And I want to keep that in a managed mode. That the aircraft, and you can see it's actually got a flight restriction of 13,000 feet, so we missed one. This is the nice thing about the. Uh, see, which one did we miss? Actually, I don't have a 13,000 foot restriction on our star chart, but the aircraft seems to think that we do. Um, and here we can set our barometric pressure. So we're going to do an up click here, 3005, and I'm going to tap the B key to set it to 9 or 8, 7. So it is the same as LA. That's good. Live weather is accurate, actually. And we're passing through day right at, at 17,000. And going for our next target, so that's good. Now at Watt Up, we do need to be above 15,000, so we're going to watch that. Nice thing about this portion is it happens very quickly. All of these steps, this is where it really gets fun flying these aircraft. Now, even though we want to be at the... Uh, even numbers, I'm not sure that we're going to make it. We're going to hit, we're going to pass that descent point. So I'm going to well, let's just see what she does. Let me show you guys. Let's, let's just let it ride. So at this point now, the reason why we want to make sure that we're watching our targets and really bringing the altimeter down by or altitude target down by uh, steps is that at this point we've broken our altitude. we breached where we're allowed to be. So I am going to lock it down at 14,000. Because Neil is a 14,000 restriction. And then at um, Sivu, we need to be at our 12,000. Now, the other thing is at Sivu, we also need to be at 270 knots. So we're restricted at that point. Now, it doesn't take this aircraft particularly long to lose 10 knots, so you're okay there. But we'll let her keep on going here a little bit. I'm going to wait till we pass Neil, and I will... Oh, yeah, we're almost there. I guess I'll hang with you guys for a minute. It doesn't make much sense to stop the video at this point. You guys just can listen to the beautiful serenity of my lovely voice. But uh, it's actually been a really good flight so far. Now, as we're starting to make our way through the descent, this is one of the things I always tell people as you're starting out and as you're learning these aircraft, stay ahead of it. Don't try to be that badass pilot right out of the first gate, you know, locking down all your approaches and everything like that, you know, as you, you know, as you're trying to learn the aircraft. It's just, it's going to take the fun out of it for you until you get familiar with it. So let's go ahead and set our 12,000 feet now. Let's put us back into that, oh, managed descent. You want that. Let's slow us down to 270 knots. The aircraft should slow down before it initiates the descent. Transponder, we want to make sure everything's set. The other thing is we're approaching another critical phase of flight. You know, as we do the, uh, um, getting to the approach, we're going to want our engine master mode back to ignition in the event that we need to restart an engine. And there's our 13,000 restriction, which is funny. I still find that interesting because it's 12 to 14,000 according to the uh, star chart. But now we're going to go to the approach plate and start getting ready for the approach. So once we pass Sivu, we're going to be looking for 10,000 feet. Now, the aircraft's already under restriction. That's what that magenta means. It means that you can set this to whatever you want. The aircraft's not going to descend until it reaches that point. So we're going to go ahead and set the 10,000. And honestly, at this point, you can set it down to sea level. It's basically where we're headed. I'm going to set it down to 2,000 feet because that's our escape altitude if we run into a missed go-around. And you can see right here it shows altitude constraint, letting you know that I have acknowledged that you want me to descend further. I'm not allowed to yet. Okay, so that's a good thing. We can also set our auto brakes. 
Our auto brakes, we're landing at 2.5 left in LA. That's a very long runway. I think it's just shy of 11,000 feet, maybe a little over. Um, we could actually look if we wanted to go to the approach plate, but I don't. <laughs> so we can hit medium, okay? Just medium auto brakes for the, uh, we can even probably go low and get away with it. All right, and we're gonna arm those speed brakes. We're coming below 10,000 feet here in a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and bring our landing lights on now. Again, I highly recommend that you guys stay ahead of it while you're learning. Stay ahead of it. Runway turn off and the lights, up to you. Um, it's really uh, based on visibility and company policy. Nose wheel light goes to taxi on landing. Okay, so we use takeoff on the takeoff, taxi on the landing. Seatbelt signs are already set. No portable devices. Once again, set. Everything else is, is good and locked in. We've already done our approach phase. The aircraft has begun its final descent down into uh, LA. We shouldn't have any other further restriction. So here's where it's going to get fun. Let's uh, begin the approach. All right. So as we're coming onto the approach, you can see our aircraft. Here we are rolling in. We have a final runway heading of 251 degrees. Want to sort of take a look at the missed approach instructions in case for any reason we have to abort the approach. This is what I was talking about our escape out to. We have climbed to 2,000 feet on a heading of 251 until we cross the uh, SMO or Santa Monica VOR, which is right here. So basically we'll fly out, continue up at 2,000 feet. Once we cross the perpendicular here, or the 160 radial here, we would then make a left turn onto 236 degrees and then turn onto um, direct course to Catley at 210 and hold until we are given instructions by ATC to come back in. So, got all that briefed, good to go. We're now on that final approach. We're passing just under 10,000 feet as we reach Crane, just as we would like. And here is where the show begins to happen. So what we're gonna be looking for here is we're gonna be looking for the 10 mile mark. Once we get our aircraft within 10 miles, and by the way, we need to also reduce our speed. I almost got to jabbering too much. 250 knots. Remember, below 10,000 feet in the U.S., all aircraft are restricted to 250 knots and below. So, we need to make sure that we uh, honor that. See the aircraft slowing down there. That's good. And you know, I just thought about something. You guys have to forgive me. Unfortunately, I have got some news that uh, my father is uh, in the ER right now, so I'm a little scatterbrained but trying to keep myself busy so forgive me if I miss some things. On the performance page we need to make sure that we set our landing flaps configuration okay so you can see right now we're configured for full flaps. I know it's really hard to see with that stupid sun in the position. Let's let's adjust daylight. Let's there we go. Alright so we're looking for at an approach speed of 138 knots with a final touchdown speed of our landing speed of 133 knots landing configuration is con um, full configuration, meaning that we're landing at full flaps. So I don't remember if I went over that earlier, and I just wanted to touch on that so you guys understood how I'm getting all the information we get to as we move along. All right, continuing our descent. We are now at Dymo. Let's keep an eye on where we're at here, according to this, at Dymo. Uh, we are to be at 8,000 feet, and uh, we're right on track here, guys. Now, the other thing we can do here is at this point, activate the LS acquisition. What this is going to do, it doesn't lock it up, but it starts looking for the ILS frequency. We can verify that ILS frequency is correct by hitting our RADNAV button. And you can see ILAX 109.9. And we can verify that on our plate here, 109.9. Alright, so all that is golden and good. Looking strong. Really nice flight so far. Everything's going really well. Really well. We can also set in our final approach heading in case we need to fly on a heading mode. It's always good to have your runway heading locked in. Landing lights are armed, spoilers are set. We're looking really good here, guys. Very good. And at 10 miles, let's bump this back up to 20. Um, at 10 miles um, is when we will begin really slowing the aircraft down and looking for that approach um, speeds and configuration. You see our runway out there, way out there. Um, and we're typically about 25, 20 miles, depending on uh, visibility and all that good jazz, uh, is when we'll acquire the ILS frequency, and you'll see that pop up here on the uh, on the primary flight display. So we got just a couple minutes here, uh, not too long to go, and uh, we'll be on the ground in LA. So just sit tight, guys, and I'll be back with you at the next stage. You know, I'll show you guys actually something pretty cool. 
we should actually pick up that ILS frequency any second now. If you look at gate, gate here is the ILAX radar fix. So at this point, right about the time we get to gate, we should we should see what we're looking for. So let's just, I'm going to keep you guys on the line with me for a second so you guys can see this happen. Assuming the magic works correctly in the way we want it to. There's throttles at idle, so we're under an altitude restriction. Oh, there we go. And gate is 17.5. Boom, there it is. So there it is. There's the approach fix. At which point we can now activate the localizer. And you can see that lock goes into green and boxes up. And what this is going to do is line us up with the center of the runway. And you can see here, ILS, glide slope, cat 3, runway 25 left. Cat 3 is its capability. So if we were in a zero visibility situation, this approach could use a uh, an auto lend. Uh, functionality, which is kind of fun, but at the same time, it gets boring. So, we are now lining up with the center of the runway. We're going to continue our descent. We're now within 14 miles, guys, so we're getting close here. So, at this point here, I'm going to start reducing our speed down to about 210 knots. Start slowing her down quite a bit. And there's our glide slope. This is where it gets fun. So you can see right here that diamond. Just about the time as we acquire it, I'm going to hit the approach mode. Boom. Approach mode activated. Glide slope is now locked. Localizer is locked. The aircraft is now going to proceed to descend on its own uh, guidance. And we are now approaching our flaps one speed at about 10 miles. I will go flaps one. Oh, we're still over speed. So what I'm going to do here is pop those speed brakes down and pull them back. And we're going to force her to slow down. This lady doesn't know who she's messing with right now. It's been a long enough evening right now. And I'm going to start taking us down to about 180 knots. And actually, we, have, we should have our reference speed, so I'm going to go back into manage mode. And there it is. There's our reference speed of 138 knots. So at this point, the aircraft will continue to slow down until it reaches its desired speed. Now, there we are at about nine miles looking for LAX here. There's about eight miles. At eight miles, I'm going to go gear down. That was a weird glitch from the nose wheel. Not light. I'm going to set flaps two. Nope, a little too soon. I'm ahead of the game. Sorry, guys. I was close. Got a little early there. I still got those spoilers deployed until she slows down quite a bit more. I want her to keep coming down. Alright, now we'll spoilers forward and armed. Auto brakes are still armed. We're doing our final checks here. Alright, now we're looking for flaps three. Good. Five miles, we'll be looking for stable and full configuration. We're on the outer marker, that's what that OM means. Five mile mark, flaps full configuration, gear is down, do a cabin call. Flight attendants, please prepare for landing. And we're good to go here, guys. Now, this is my personal preference when flying this aircraft, but at this point, I also do like to start up the APU. Don't turn the bleeds or anything like that on. We're just starting the APU. In the event we need it for an engine restart, great, it's available. Or, when we land the aircraft and we taxi up to the gate, we'll already have the APU running in case ground power isn't available. Just makes things a little bit smoother. We'll be looking for about 200 feet on the radar. Once we get to about 200 feet is when we will be uh, disengaging the autopilot, taking over control of the aircraft. 400. All right, in the final moments of our landing, you can see land is now executed on the uh, autopilot. I'm going to disengage the autopilot. 100 above. <laughs> Minimum. Continuing. 
Looking for the one, numbers one. today. There's the inner marker, letting us know we're 50, crossing the threshold. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Wheels down. Throttles to idle. Reverse is deployed. Came a little bit off center line, not too bad. 60 knots. Reverser is deactivated. Come on, baby. No, I touched the brakes while moving my camera. Every time, I'm telling you, man. Every time. All right, now we will safely exit the runway at our earliest convenience. Remember, while you're on the runway, the runway is yours. Nice 747 roll off there. That was awesome. All right, we want to cross the hold short line. It's better to take up a taxiway than a runway. All right, and from here, let's reconfigure our aircraft for taxi. So, first thing we're going to obviously want to do is get those flaps up. Spoilers disarmed. Verify auto brake is off. TCAS needs to go back into the standby position. Predictive wind shear needs to be turned off. Engine master mode can now go back to the normal position. Stepping upstairs for a second here. We want to make sure landing lights are turned off. Runway turnoff lights at your discretion. Taxi light, make sure that is on. I can't remember. Okay, cool. Yep, taxi. And strobe light also needs to come off as well. All right, and that's all we needed to do to make sure we were clear for taxi. Let's go ahead and continue. Now, we do have an alert over here. What's this? Oh, predictive wind shear. That's fine. All right, at this point, we'll taxi over to our gate, park the aircraft. Mercy. Come on, get a hold of your aircraft, Michael. All right, we can close down Navigraph. Obviously, we got runway 25 right over here, which is clearly an active runway as we just saw that 747 bolt out. So we want to hold short here, verify the runway is clear before trying to take it. It's a little hard to see, so we're going to simulate we have access. I don't want to hold you guys up too long here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Goodness. Everyone's got to be yelling at me. Please don't be a plane. Cool. All right. It really was safe. <laughs> All right. Clear the runway. Good. Come up over here to our exit. Really hope you guys enjoyed the flight today. It was a lot of fun. The aircraft flew beautifully. By the way, we can also dis disable the LS mode, disable the flight directors. We don't need them anymore. Oh, we got an aircraft pushing back over here. Always fun to see traffic. That one looks like it's in the lobby. <laughs> it's going to take this one next to him, but then he pushed back into it. So we'll, we'll, we'll grab the next one here. We'll take the next bus. All right. Now, before we start making our turn, so we don't blind everybody, turn your taxi light off. Okay. Oh, darn it. I didn't mean to stop the aircraft. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. All right. Let's start turning her in here. There we go. Easiest way to manage these lines and get pretty darn close is, is if you're sitting in the center of your monitor, your flight screen, put that yellow line right between your legs. And you'll find that you're pretty much right where you want to be. Let's see how close I am here. Boom, what I tell you. Put it right between your legs. Now this part can be a little tricky to find that yellow line. It's really, it's sort of one of those, the more you do it, you get used to it. See how close I was today. Eh, I was a little... Still a little far away. They usually have markers based on the type of aircraft that's coming in, but also that's why you have a marshaller. Boom, right there. Okay. 
All right, at this point, let's shut the aircraft down. So shutting her down is actually pretty darn easy. So obviously we want to set our parking brake. This is where I was talking to you earlier about having the APU available. If you didn't have external power, which we do, you would obviously keep the APU on. You don't need the bleed. The bleed is only used for the engines. But at this point, we can go external power, turn that on. We can disable the uh, APU now, shut it down. Let's just come up top. I think that'd be easier way place to start here. All right, and, oh, actually, excuse me, that's not the best place to start. Gosh darn it, come on, Mike. That's what I want. Engine 2 and Engine 1, set them to the off position. That's going to be fuel cutoff. Get those bad boys powering down. As they power down, we want to turn the engine bleeds off and the gens off. APU gen does not need to be on, so we're not worried about that. Coming up here, we can turn our fuel pumps off. IRSs can now go to the off position as we cycle down. Crew oxygen supply no longer lead needed. Uh, we'll leave the emergency exit lights armed until the deboarding has completed, but we can now tell passengers they're free to get up and walk around. Make sure all of our lights are off. Beacon lights, wing lights, nav, and logo lights. Coming down here. Make sure our transponder goes back into the standby position. Spoilers are disarmed. Cabin door can be unlocked. And on that, she looks good to go. Last stage, final push push, is going to be external power disabled. And there's the freaking thing. And it would be battery off one, battery, or battery two off, battery one off. And there is our cold and dark cockpit. Well, like I said, guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this flight. I certainly did. It was actually a relatively smooth flight. Um, even given the information I received, it was actually kind of a nice distraction. So hopefully um, everything goes well tonight, and I will see you guys, as always, in the next one. Take care, folks.